Hey everyone, welcome to the Canine Culture Podcast, where we talk about everything dog. Q and A's with veterinarian professionals, rescue operators, everyday topics. We cover everything dog on this podcast. So make sure you subscribe to the Canine Culture Podcast on your favorite podcast platform, and make sure you're following us on social media on both Instagram and Facebook. Thanks again for listening. Now here's that next episode. everyone. Welcome to the Canine Culture Podcast. This is your host, Brittany. And today we are joined with Kay Stewart from the Feed Real Institute. So Kay, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, you're welcome. I'm happy to be here. Tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do. I know you've got a bunch of letters behind your name (laughs) and that's always really great to see. And so I'd love to hear kind of how you got into the Feed Real Institute and what you do. Sure. So I graduated from vet tech school way back in the early 80s, um, but spent most of my career in biomedical research and recently retired from that and got into the Feed Real Institute, which is a much better fit for me because I really love dogs and I love writing and researching. And so it's an educational platform about dogs and how to feed them real food. So it really meshed my um, love for dogs, my love for research and writing, and really in an authentic way allows me to use those really strong um, passions of mine. So I've been there since it's almost three years. Okay. It's interesting to find someone else that loves researching and writing. Uh, That's why I went to law school. One of the many reasons I love to research and I love to write, and I've never been able to fully merge that with dogs and you have it all figured out. So I (laughs) I mean, if you ever retire, I can come in and I can take that position. (laughs) So tell everyone what the Feed Real Institute does. And I know you guys offer so much with respect to educational pieces and not only for vets and professionals, but also beginners or just everyday dog owners. So tell us about all of that. Yes, I, we actually uh, started out creating a dog parent course. And when I was hired on, that was the project is to get a course um, set up for training for our staff and also for dog parents. And as we were doing this, um, we really started talking about how do we get the veterinary community involved? Because if people aren't getting good veterinary advice when they're feeding raw food, um, then we have to worry about, are they going to create imbalances? Are they going to create issues with their dogs? So we decided, Mm -hmm. um, being the educational platform that we are, that we wanted to educate all aspects. And so we, as we were about to launch the dog parent basic feeding course, um, We decided that we wanted to also do a veterinary professional course, so we split it. Um, The veterinary professional course is more academic and a little more scientific, but it mirrors the dog parent course. So if you're taking the course and your veterinarian is taking the course, then you know what each other is learning. Um, Our Mm -hmm. goal is to get the veterinary professionals to understand the benefits of fresh feeding. Fresh food in a dog's bowl Um, I think our biggest takeaway with the veterinarians is to tell them that when you go to the doctor, they're going to tell you not to eat ultra processed food, but the veterinary community is telling pet owners to feed ultra processed food to all of their pets. Mm -hmm. And there's a huge disconnect and that's what we're trying to bridge. So by having the professional course, we were actually able to get it approved through the registry that approves um, continuing education. It's called the race registry. And they Mm -hmm. can actually get continuing education credits for taking the course, for doing our workshop, for doing our webinars, so that we can educate them. They have incentive to take it because they can get their CEs out of the way. Any of us that are in the veterinary professional world, we need 10 to 12 a year, maybe more depending on your state. And so that was one of our big uptakes is that we're going to get this race certified so the veterinarians can get credit for it. Um, Also, dog trainers and dog behaviorists can get credit for it for their CE's requirements. So we're really trying to reach a broad group of people and get everybody to understand why fresh food is so important for their dogs. So that's one of our biggest offerings is the professional and the dog parent course. 
Mm-hmm. But we also just our website has a wealth of information of articles that I've written on all kinds of topics that focus on fresh feeding. And when I'm saying fresh feeding, people automatically think I'm talking raw, which for the most part mm-hmm. we are. Um, that's what I feed my dog and my daughter's dog and both of the cats on the property. Um, but you can gently cook that food. You can add fresh food to a bowl of kibble and get a lot of benefit from it if you're not ready to do all fresh. There's a lot of ways you can bring that fresh food component to a dog's bowl. Yeah, I think lately, I think what we've kind of seen as a trend is a lot of people experimenting with raw diets or fresh diets. Mm -hmm. And what a lot of people don't understand is that that balance component. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so I know you guys offer a calculator Mm -hmm. on your website and that calculator, if I understand it correctly, you can kind of plug things in to see if you're balancing your dog's diet correctly, right? So what our calculator does is it gives you, um, based on your dog's age, weight, and activity level, and we actually explain what those activity levels are because everybody thinks their dog's active. And and I'd say 90% of the dogs Mm -hmm. in the U.S. are not very active. Um, And so we coach you through all that. And once you've done that, you get your dog's daily food intake. So for my 45 pound dog, that's not real active. She gets about 14 and a half ounces of food a day. And then the calculator breaks it down into the components of the raw diet, the raw meaty bones, the muscle meat, Um, We advocate for the ancestral diet for adding seafood as part of the muscle meat. Um, And then the organs, both liver and some other kind of organ, and then some type of fiber. It can be fur, if your dog likes furred items, or it can be um, low glycemic fruits and vegetables, depending on, like my dog and my daughter's dog, neither of them will eat any vegetables. So we give them Mm. fur or psyllium husks or something else that they can get their fiber from. But the feed reel calculator breaks that down into the how much raw meaty bones you give, how much uh, muscle meat, seafood, organs, and um, and then the fiber. We do not have like the animal diet formulator, uh, for instance. That's another um, website. They break it down by every mineral. Mm-hmm. We don't do that. We advocate for balancing over time. You're rotating proteins and you're giving a variety of foods. You're going to balance that meal over time. And that's the way you and I eat, the way we feed our children. We don't worry about a spreadsheet. Some people are really wanting to worry about the spreadsheet. And that's fine if that's the way you choose to do it. Um, That's an option. Um, But Mm -hmm. we don't advocate for that option just because it's it's very cumbersome. um, And it's just not necessary. We, you know, you just balance over time. Right. I think there's definitely a spectrum of, of level of effort. You mm-hmm. know, some people when they're feeding raw, the hoops they have to jump through to get the food and to make the food and maybe even to kind of blend it up. And then there's some other people who maybe want it to be a little more simplified and not as simple as just kibble, but, right. you know, maybe just something that's a little bit more attainable. So I know you guys have a bunch of articles on your website that kind of help people Mm -hmm. figure out where they want to jump in with their comfort level and, and things like that. So you guys have those articles, you have the calculator. Now you guys also have the summit. What is the summit that you host? So this is our second annual one coming up in October. And we bring in experts on dog wellness and longevity. So it's not just about food. It's about all the ways that you can enhance your dog's longevity and, and their um, well-being, overall well-being, how well, how well they're doing on a day-to-day basis. Um, this year, we have um, Dr. Connor Brady is coming in from Ireland, and he wrote basically what I consider the Bible of raw feeding dogs. It's called Feeding Dogs. Um, he's coming. And a colleague of his from the UK, who's a very stout um, raw feeding expert, Nick Thompson. Um, if you've heard of the the book Forever Dog, have you heard of that book? Mm-hmm. The authors of that are coming, um, both Karen Becker and Rodney Habib. And they are actually, um, every person that joins the summit will get a copy of their new book that's coming out in a couple of months called Forever Dog Life. Life. Um, and so those are our four main speakers, but then we have a lot of other speakers doing a, a panel sessions. We're doing workshops. Um, we have 
um, Angela Arlino, who is an expert on mushrooms and CBD. She's going to mm-hmm. do one of the talks. We've had her and, on the podcast before. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And so, and she's so knowledgeable. She'll be there with us. Um, and so just a host of, of great speakers, um, a lot of events, there'll be vendors set up. You can get stuff there. Um, we did the first one last October and I mean, within 24 hours, people are asking when's the next one. And it's located in, oh, wow. in San Diego, up in La Jolla, beautiful venue. Uh, and it's just, we decided to do a two day one this time because it was such a huge, um, that was just so exciting and everybody just really wanted more. So we're going to go with two days and yeah, it's promising to be as good, if not better than last year's. And um, we are out of VIP tickets, but we do still have some general admission tickets. So. Okay. And I know it'll be a lot of vet professionals, uh, whether it be vets, maybe dog trainers, are you guys seeing a lot of just dog owners or people Absolutely. who are just, you know, really care say, about their pets? Coming? Yeah, I would say at least, at least 50% will just, will be okay. dog owners, maybe even more. Um, and last year we didn't have too many veterinary professionals. We might this year, uh, the more we get known, um, we're getting more and more veterinary professionals signing up for our courses. And so we're getting known out there. So we spend a lot of time going to veterinary conferences and Mm -hmm. as a vendor and meeting with as many people as we can during those conferences and talking about feeding, you know, feeding real food, the benefits of it. Um, Veterinarians are very slow to want to embrace this, a lot of them. And there's a couple of reasons for that. They, in vet school, they were taught that kibble is what it is. It's balanced, it's complete. And they had to learn so much in vet school Basically, the kibble companies are like, don't worry about nutrition. We've got you covered. And all of a sudden, people are saying, well, we really don't want to feed that way. And so it's a whole paradigm shift for them. And I I understand. I had to go through it when I switched and started working for the Feed Real Institute. And that's how I was trained, that kibble is what you feed dogs. So we are just really trying to, to reach that veterinary side of it. So hopefully, we'll have some veterinary professionals. We had a couple of them last year. Um, but yeah, it's mainly dog owners and dog trainers and anybody that works with dogs. Um, you know, people that have grooming shops that have dog walking businesses, you know, they just, there's Mm -hmm. a lot of, uh, it's just a great avenue to come together and meet like-minded people and enjoy the day and Mm -hmm. just have a lot of fun with it. So the if you go to feedreel.com slash summit, that's where you can get all that information, um, on the feedreel site. One okay. of our biggest, yeah, and um, it's interesting. You, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say one of our biggest offerings is the DIY workshop that we have. And that's a virtual workshop um, that I get on a call with anywhere from eight to 10 people um, on the call. And it's global. The one time I did one um, a couple months ago, it was, there was nobody from the U S there. They were all from all over the world, um, which was so amazing to mm-hmm. me. But we always have someone from like last one I did, we have two from New Zealand, um, one from Canada, you know, and then we've had them from Indonesia, from, you know, all the UK, all different places. And we come together and learn about how to get those bowls made efficiently um, and on a budget. And so we talk about all the ways to do that. And we actually go through and make meals. Uh, If you join or buy the professional course, you actually have to take the workshop as part of the um, course at the end of it so that Mm -hmm. we know you are understanding the concepts. Because one of the things we do, we teach a lot of why you need to do it, but we also teach how to feed fresh food. We don't just give you all the academic side of it, but also the practical side of it. And so that workshop, it lasts anywhere from two to two and a half hours. You, but at the end of it, you'll have seven meals for your dog, um, all fresh. And we talk about sourcing. We talk about why you put all those components in. We talk about what the dog's poop is going to look like once you start feeding fresh. There's a lot of um, changes that you're going to see with that. And so I think mm-hmm. if any of your listeners are really wanting to get um, a quick lesson on how to do all this, if you're not real academic and don't want to go through the whole course, the workshop is for you. 
that's hands on. You get in there. Uh, it's really popular. It's already sold out all of April and the first one in May is sold out also. Um, we're doing two mm -hmm. a month. Um, that may have to change. <laughs> we may need to increase it to <laughs> three or four a month. We'll see as, as time goes on because right. it's very popular. Uh, another thing that we are um, that we have on our site is a directory to help you find where to get all this all the components for the fresh diet. So in the Nashville okay. area where I am, there's a, a town called Springfield. It's about an hour drive for me, but it is a raw feeding co-op and I can go up and get everything I need for raw feeding. I just went up last week and got enough food to last two dogs and two cats through the end of July. It costs $350. Oh, wow. $50, but if you figure that's not very much for four animals for three and a half months. Right. And so right. it doesn't have to be really, uh, and it, really expensive. Um, you do have to look and see if in your area, if you can find places. And so we, we go through all of that too. We, we help you find, we help you source, we help you um, talk about different ways to transition. And I think one of the things that I really like to emphasize is that we meet people where they are. So if you're saying, I don't want mm -hmm. to give up kibble, that's fine. Just adding food, fresh food to kibble is going to still enhance your dog, uh, their well-being, their longevity quite a bit. There's really good studies out there uh, that show the benefit of that. And you can do it very specifically. Let's say your dog is a pit mix that has itchy skin all the time, you know, if you're in a hot area where the, mm -hmm. the there's just hot spots and lots of itchy skin and ear infections, adding fresh fatty fish like sardines and herring and anchovies to the top of their bowl can help very, very much with that issue. So you don't have to mm -hmm. think, oh, I can't do this because I can't go all in. Just start looking at the kibble toppers. And there's an article on the Feed Real site called Kibble Toppers. And that is very, very mm -hmm. helpful. A lot of what you said resonates with, I think, the way that humans have been eating and the way that our eating has shifted. So I think there's been a paradigm shift. We're kind of demanding it from our healthcare, but mm -hmm. humans are always, you know, we've, we've the food pyramid and we know the food pyramid <laughs> is probably not at all how we should eat <laughs> ever. And, you know, I think over time we have learned for certain bodies, maybe a lower carbohydrate diet, maybe for sure. some people with different illnesses or ailments, a ketogenic diet, maybe some people they do better on more of like a Mediterranean style. And so I think it is, I think people can see those parallels in how we're feeding ourselves and how we're changing that and how we're feeding our dogs. So like you said, a lot of our doctors were taught in med school, like don't worry about it. Food is food. It's all good. You guys don't really need to wor worry about that. Same thing with vets. Right. They're just taught, Hey, here's our main kibble players. You're all set. They've got this handled for you. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us have learned that that's not true. And, you know, another piece of what you said was this doesn't have to cost an arm and a leg. It could, if you wanted it to, it could. <laughs> but, you know, much like with people, we can choose where we shop. We can choose okay, where did we source this from? Where's our priority? Do we want organic this? Do we want high, pro what kind of high protein do we want or protein source? And so I think that's another kind of misconception with feeding uh, real food or feeding raw or however people want to look at this is a lot of people assume it's very, very expensive, but that's not always the case. And, um, you know, I'll say I have four dogs and they all eat completely different diets. Mm -hmm. I do not recommend that to anyone. It's the worst thing I've ever done. Uh, but I actually have one that eats raw and we actually, right now we import his food from a company that does it for us. So mm -hmm. they do all the organ meats and, and quite frankly, all the things that I probably would never do. Uh, <laughs> and then one of our other dogs, she, we do ground Turkey, mm -hmm. um, with like some coconut oil and a salmon oil. And then we'll also do like dehydrate, dehydrated vegetables. And we also, we purchase those. Um, they're actually Dr. Harvey's, mm -hmm. uh, but they dehydrate them. They have different blends. Again, they simplified it for me. And then our other dogs, they do different types of kibble. Um, but we do toppers, like you said. Mm -hmm. So we'll do like a uh, fish or uh, lately it's actually been adding fish to most of their kibble. We do different oils and stuff too. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but even for us, it's like, what does each of our dogs need? What have we seen with their behavioral changes? What have we seen with their activity levels, with um, the frequency of their stool and their bowel movements? And what do those look like? And a lot of people don't like to have even that conversation, but that's really important to know what does my dog's stool look like? If it's Absolutely. gooey, runny, mushy six times a day, you probably got a problem. Uh, and I think you guys have something on your website about um, something with checking your dog's stool and kind of mm -hmm. understanding issues. I think I saw an article or something on your website oh, yeah. about that. We have a full article. We call it being, um, becoming your poop inspector because especially as you feed raw or fresh food, their poop is going to change. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, we take the uneasiness out where you're like, everybody, your dog's going to poop every day and you should be looking at it. Um, things that mm -hmm. you're going to notice right away is that their poops are much smaller and less odorous if you are feeding all yeah. raw. Um, but I wanted to go back, mm -hmm. let's circle back to what you said about how your dogs are on four different diets. I really want to emphasize that every dog is different. Every dog mm -hmm. has, you're feeding that dog in front of you. And that's where when you're feeding a fresh diet, you can really tweak that diet according to that dog in front of you. I just rescued a dog um, and she's, I've had her for five weeks. And when I first got her, she was quite itchy. And so I made mm -hmm. sure that her food has a lot of fish in it. And then some cooling proteins. I was giving her turkey um, to try and bring that inflammation down. And so mm -hmm. knowing, you know, what's going on with her and, and then I can change her food um, energetically and, and get her onto what her body needs. And then I've been watching, you know, as she's fully transitioned now, um, seeing the differences in her stools, you know, it, and then you can monitor. So if their stool's real soft, you can add extra bone to their meals. If it's too hard, you can mm -hmm. reduce the bone. So you really do need to inspect the dog's poop on a daily basis and just watch the dog. You know, if they're, if you're following the, the calculator and that daily food intake is making them gain a little weight, well, then you're going to have to back down a little bit. If they're right. not holding weight, then increase it a little bit. And so again, you're feeding that dog in front of you. And that's so important to remember. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Again, just like people, we are all so different. We have different dietary needs. We all mm -hmm. move differently. And so, yeah, so I 100% hear you on that, feeding every dog different. And you can't just do what Jim on Facebook did, you yeah. know, like you've <laughs> actually got to take some time and look into it. Uh, so let's say someone is brand new to this concept and they're nervous about it. Mm -hmm. They go to your website, they go on the Feed Real Institute. What do you think is the first thing they should look at as a brand new person to this concept? Mm -hmm. I think looking at a couple of the articles, um, like how to transition the kibble toppers article, um, and just, there is a membership, there's a pay gate for the more advanced articles. So go through and look at the free articles first, see where mm -hmm. it is. There's ones on, um, uh, raw meaty bones, raw meaty bones are so important in the raw feeding because you, you can give bone. They're really good for them. Dogs naturally want to chew. It gives them uh, exercise in their jaw. It gives them mental stimulation. It's a natural way to clean their teeth, um, but it has to be raw bones. It cannot be cooked bones. And so we have a great article on that and why that is, you know, all the reason behind that, how the bones change when they get heated up, the, the matrix of the bone hardens. And, you know, there's a lot of issues with that. So um, those are the articles I would go to first. And just get okay. an idea of, of what it would take and understand that, you know, you can start slowly. You can start with those kibble toppers and see how your dog responds to it. You can just be making food in your in your kitchen and start handing them pieces as you're making things. Like if you're going to cook chicken, give them a couple pieces of raw chicken or raw beef or, you know, and just kind of see where they're at with it. Um, like I said, my dog won't do mm -hmm. any vegetables, neither dog that I food prep for. Um <laughs> So we have to get their fiber some other way, but you, you get to know your dog and you, you know, play with it from there. Some dogs, when you first try to transition, will not eat raw. So you need to gently cook it, offer it that way. And um, the one dog that I transitioned, my daughter's family dog, 
she wouldn't eat anything raw at first. So I had to lightly cook everything for about two weeks. And then she's like, Oh, okay. I like this. <laughs> you know. And mm -hmm. so there's a lot of, a lot of information on the website that can help you get started. And if you are one that likes to really read and, and have the academic side to you, that dog parent course is very well written, um, easily digested, pardon the pun, and just uh, <laughs> full of information of the why and how. It's going to guide you all the way through. Or like I said, you can just take that workshop and get the hands-on experience too. So we're, mm -hmm. we're just out. Our goal is to get real food, fresh food into every dog's bowl, whether it's the whole bowl or just kibble toppers. Right. Yeah. Is there anything else that we have missed? I know we've talked about the upcoming summit in October in San Diego, mm -hmm. the articles that you have for every level from beginner mm -hmm. to, you know, advanced, right. the, courses, the courses, the workshop, the calculator. Um, what else? Do we miss anything else? I, I mean, you guys are doing phenomenal work and you. you wouldn't believe how frequently people ask how do I know I'm feeding my dog a balanced diet? And mm -hmm. so the fact that you guys offer this calculator is, is huge. You know, I think it's it going is. to help so many people who are invested in their dog's health, but they just don't know where to go. And they've maybe been shut down by other perhaps vet professionals mm -hmm. or their, you know, their friends saying, Oh, I don't know if you should feed raw. You know, I don't know too much about it. I think you guys are giving people that educational piece to really mm -hmm. empower them to, help their dog's health and longevity. Um, so anything that I missed from what you guys no, are offering? Uh, I think I love the way you um, said empowering, and that's exactly what we are doing is empowering dog owners to know their dog and learn how to feed their dog. We don't want to give you a recipe that you follow the exact way every time. That's not doing you, that's not empowering you. That's not giving you the tools. And so that's why we, we give the tools. We help you learn. We help you all the way. Um, if you've taken the workshop, they have access. They have my email. They can email me questions. Um, the workshop is great because everybody talks to each other and they get tips from people that have been doing it for 20 years. Um, it's just, the I would say the workshop's the best way to start if you're really wanting to get in to do your own. Uh, DIY. I feed my 45 pound dog for under a hundred dollars a month and mm -hmm. she's hundred percent fresh raw food. So mm -hmm. yeah. don't be scared. Sure. That's the biggest thing is take the fear of it out. You know, you're not going to hurt yeah. your dog and you, you know, right. uh, annual vet visits are great. You can still get blood work done. You can get, you know, make sure that the body weight's right and there's no parasites, you know, and all that. Right. And that's a great way to, to work with it too. So there's a lot that you can do, but take the fear out. Mm -hmm. Right. Remind everyone again, what the website is. Yes. It's feedreal.com. And that's where the calculator, the courses, the workshop, everything's right on that um, landing page and you can find everything that you need. All right. Well, thank you so much, Kay. We really appreciate you letting us know about all of these amazing resources and appreciate your time. That's great. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to the Canine Culture Podcast. Please make sure you subscribe to the Canine Culture Podcast on your favorite podcast platform and make sure you're following us on social media. If you have any recommendations, any topics that you'd like to hear, if you know of any guests that would be good for the show, or if you yourself want to be a guest, please reach out to us. Send us an email at canineculturepodcast at gmail.com or send us a direct message on social media. Thank you for listening and please share this with any of your dog loving friends.